Now you all may know me well for my huge love for platformers, right? I mean hell, nearly anything I've talked about in my videos is platformer related. However, it's not exactly the only video game genre I grew to love in my gaming years. Another genre that I was heavily addicted to when I was younger was sandbox games, a genre which lets the player take control of a criminal or civilian and is free to roam a lively environment like a city or a town with things that happen in everyday life. And there's only one franchise that got me into the genre as a whole, and you can pretty much guess what it is. Yep, it's the Grand Theft Auto franchise. This is without a doubt one of the most inspirational video game franchises out there, and also one of the most controversial. It also has been responsible for revolutionising video gaming in terms of storytelling and open world style of gameplay. So because of my memories with this series, I decided to do a remake of my retrospective of this series. I know a lot of people may have done something like this already, but since GTA 5 is near the corner, I will do this retrospective in honour of its official announcement. So I, Zookstar1000, give you Video Game Series slash Video Game Company Perspectives Grand Theft Auto. Now, let's start at the very beginning. Back in the mid 90s, a company named Direct Mind Access Design was formed by Scottish video game designer David Jones. He had made many games in the early days for the Commodore Amiga like Menace and the Lemming games. Then in 1997, the company decided to create a video game where the player would be placed in a free roaming city, take control of a civilian and do nothing but roam around the city, shoot people, do crimes and missions. That was when the PS1 game Grand Theft Auto was born. This, this game has the player decide to choose which character to play as from 8 different characters. Once chosen, the player will be put in a city and will be given a number of missions to accomplish. As the player completes these missions, they will be rewarded with more points, which will grant them access to more difficult missions later on in the game. Points can also be earned if the player is able to cause enough death and chaos throughout the city. During the free roaming, you can also jack other people's vehicles if you don't have a vehicle with you. However, doing crimes is not all easy as police forces will be patrolling the streets and if you cause trouble while they're around in a specific area, they will either try to arrest or kill you. And that, my friends, is where the concept of crime-causing gameplay of Grand Theft Auto all started. On its release on October 1997, well, it did sell a fair amount of copies and became a commercial success, but the critics had mixed feelings towards the, the game. Some liked it, others didn't. However, even if it wasn't so popular back then, it has since grown a cult following and many GTA fans still regard it as a classic. The game later expanded a mission pack with two other GTA games that have the exact same formula as the original, but are instead taking place in London in the 1960s. So because of the original's commercial success, in 1989 a sequel was produced, simply entitled Grand Theft Auto 2. The game is set in a futuristic city in... somewhere in the USA? I don't know, the game never says. Anyway, this sequel still shares the same formula as the original. You are still controlling a criminal in an overhead view of the city and are still doing missions to earn points to progress through the game. However, the new feature that they added to this instalment was working with different kinds of gangs. Although this can cause problems because working with one gang can cause the other gangs to lose faith in the player. Another new addition is the wanted level. In the original, the only forces that go after you are the police. But if you, but if you can cause so much trouble in this game, it will raise the wanted level and will send stronger forces like the SWAT, the FBI and even the military after your ass. Another thing that differs this game from the original is the save feature, where the player must go to the church with $50,000 to save the game. Yeah, many people say that this was an improvement to the original save feature, since in that game it could only be saved if the player had finished a city, but I don't know, it still feels cheap to me. Anyway, the last new feature that they added were the side missions, where if you enter a taxi, semi-truck or a bus, the player can do missions from there to earn more points. So when the game was released in 1999, it did like the first one in terms of sales, selling just as much copies, but the reviews this time were much better and more positive. However, it still didn't rise up to be a huge success despite the better reviews, but just like the original, it has also received a cult following with many hardcore fans of the series. 
So now it was at that time that the PlayStation 2 was taking over the PlayStation 1 and was hitting the markets everywhere. So what was the future of Grand Theft Auto for this new industry? Well in 2001, DMNA Designs decided to start from scratch. And by scratch, I mean rename their entire company to the more iconic Rockstar North. Whilst the PlayStation 2 didn't start well in the launch title department when it was first released in 2000, the next year in 2001, Rockstar North finally released the third installment to the Grand Theft Auto series, Grand Theft Auto 3, released for the PlayStation 2. And man was this game an impact. Unlike the previous games, this entry to the series is a little more story based. The story for this game takes place in Liberty City in 2001, where a silent criminal named Claude Speed is doing a bank robbery with his girlfriend Catalina, but unfortunately he is backstabbed by Catalina and is arrested by the cops. That is until an ambush hits the police convey and gives the opportunity for Claude to escape, alongside another prisoner, 8-Ball. After getting back into ship shape, Claude would later go on to work for other criminal organisations like the strip club owner Luigi, an Italian mobster named Tony Cipriani, and the Leone Mafia leader Don Salvatore Leone. As the story progresses, Claude will later find himself betraying people to work for other criminals who will help him get revenge on Catalina. The gameplay for this installment of the series basically takes the concept of the last two GTA games and expands it into a whole new experience, combining third person shooting and driving mechanics into a full 3D game. However, this was not the first time sandbox games would be transferred to 3D, as games like Hunter and another game made by Rockstar North, Body Harvest, which even though it did receive ok reviews from critics, it was a commercial flop selling very poorly during its release thus making Grand Theft Auto 3 the first 3D sandbox game to be very successful. Anyway, the player controls Claude and has the standard controls from the last two GTA games like sprinting, using weapons to kill dozens of foes, beat them up with hand-to-hand -hand combat, and jack people's cars to get around in the city. Like the previous games, you will have a number of missions to complete in order to progress through the game, and will be rewarded with more money once the mission is done. Causing chaos in this game is much more destructive than the previous titles, and that means causing as much trouble means the wanted level is more easier to rise. The game has a wide variety of weapons and vehicles this time around, which makes it more fun to free roam and cause as much havoc. Your health bar and also armor bar is in the game is now set in numbers, and the game also has a 24 hour clock, so the game will go from morning to day to afternoon to night. When you either die or get arrested in the game however, you will be taken to either the hospital or police station, and all of your weapons, armor and some of your money will be stripped. Side missions this time can involve getting a taxi and picking up passengers, or taking a cop car and taking out criminals. More new features added to the game are safe houses, which are basically the save points in the game. And man, this save feature is miles better than the save features in the previous games. There are three parts of Liberty City to go to, Portland Island, Staunton Island and Shoreside Vale. You start off in Portland and by completing more of the storyline missions, will unlock the next two islands in the process. Being 3D, the game also has much more realistic activities going on, like how the pedestrians will react to crime and destruction, destruction to the cars and vehicles, various conversations happening in the game, and more activities that you would normally find in a criminal environment like this. Despite these big changes however, there are also other changes that didn't make it to the game due to development problems. You see, this game was released at the time of the 9-11 effect, and since the game's setting was based on New York City, there were many changes like the colour of the police cars, and characters that were eventually scrapped. But enough about that, the day that the game was released on October 22nd, 2001, it got immediate critical acclaim from almost any critic and gamer under the sun for its innovation in video game storytelling and the expanded sandbox gameplay. This led to the new term Grand Theft Auto Clone, where other sandbox games released after Grand Theft Auto 3's success would take the same formula from the game and incorporate with their own designs. However, despite all of the praise the game may have gotten, there were also some controversial concerns regarding the game's violence and sexual content. So although Grand Theft Auto 3 led itself to success, it was also the beginning of the controversy for the franchise. 
So because of Grand Theft Auto 3's revolutionary success, making a sequel to an already groundbreaking game is always going to be a risk to accomplish. However, in 2002, Rockstar North released the second 3D GTA game in the series, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. It's the story of a Liberty City mobster named Tommy Forsetti, who had been released from prison in 15 years after killing 11 men in Liberty City. Tommy's boss, Sonny Forelli, then fears that his release will rise awareness to other criminal organisations. To prevent this, Sonny sends Tommy and his lawyer, Ken Rosenberg, out to sort out a drug deal with the Vance crime family. But the deal was ambushed by an unknown party killing the drug dealers, but Tommy and Ken managed to escape. However, this ambush angers Sonny and threatens Tommy to fix the problem, otherwise things will not be good. Now Tommy has to retrieve the money and kill the ones responsible for the ambush, along with Ken and another member of the Vance crime family, Lance Vance. So you can pretty much tell that this story pays homages to Scarface and Miami Vice. Now the game's story this time takes place in the period of the late 80s, circa 1986. So if you grew up in that time period, then chances are that this game will give you a blast of nostalgia with the soundtrack, atmosphere and its pop culture of many 80s fashion vehicles and music. Anyway, the game pretty much takes the expanded gameplay formula from Grand Theft Auto 3 and adds some new features to keep the game fresh. For one, the game has added new types of vehicles to use like motorcycles and helicopters, which helps the player getting around the open world environment much easier. The biggest addition to this game is the ability to purchase new hideouts and other properties located around the city. When purchasing a hideout, you can save your game from there and weapons can be stored whenever you want to use them. Other properties that can be bought are a taxi company, a film studio, a dance club, a strip club, an ice cream van delivery business and much more that you will need to use to earn as much money as you can. Each business will have a number of missions for you to accomplish, which usually consist of beating a competition with a rival company or just stealing some equipment. When all missions are completed, the business will begin an ongoing income and each time you visit the business it will earn you more money. The game still has the same story missions and optional side missions involved and each of the story missions do offer more unique ideas than the previous games. Because of the game's new addition of vehicles, stunts can be performed that can earn money if done right. This is also the first GTA game to have packages hidden around the city, and by collecting 100 of them will earn more weapons and items. The game also has the feature of costumes, where you can give Tommy Fercetti different kinds of costumes for various situations. There are also more shops and restaurants located around the city, where you can buy new weapons, armour, or go to the restaurants to eat some food to increase your health. On its release on October 27th, it got just as much, if not more, critical acclaim than Grand Theft Auto 3. Many critics gave it a 9 out of 10 or low, praising the game for its open-ended action and the game's atmosphere of the 1980s. As for the sales, it sold over 17. million copies worldwide, making it the fourth best-selling video game of all time. However, did the game receive controversy? Well, yeah! Even worse than Grand Theft Auto 3, not only was the violent and sexual content still criticised, but the game was also considered racist by many Mexican groups for its use of e ethnic groups, which then led to a lot of lawsuits. However, even if it was panned by these groups, the game was still highly successful enough. Now we get to the big one. Literally. Two years after Vice City's release, Rockstar North gave us the one and only Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. The year is 1992 and it's the story of Carl Johnson, also known as CJ, who returns from a five year vacation in Liberty City to his hometown in Los Santos San Andreas to attend the funeral of his murdered mother. He meets up with his brother Sweet, who is also the leader of the Grove Street families, his younger sister Kendall, who has a relationship with an Asian gangster, Caesar, and his fellow homies, Big Smoke, who by the way has probably the funniest dialogue in any GTA game, and Ryder. Because his gang has gotten weaker to the rival gang, the Ballers, Carl must help re-establish his gang back to the way it was. However, he would also have to deal with Officer Frank Tenpenny, who is also using Carl. However, as the story progresses, there are a number of plot twists here and there, which makes this story more engaging than the previous games. You will also meet up with new different types of characters, as well as ones from the previous GTA games, and the story this time deals with more serious issues this time, like drugs, family issues, betrayal, and more, also making this story more darker than the previous installments. 
Now, let me start off by saying that the size of San Andreas is huge! I mean, not only do you have cities to explore, but also new environments like the countryside and the desert. The cities in the game are Los Santos, the game's counterpart to Los Angeles and also Carl's hometown, San Fierro, the game's counterpart to San Francisco, and Los Venturas, the game's counterpart to Las Vegas. Anyway, compared to the other installments, the game has more, and I mean a lot more variety. First off, you still have the same abilities like sprinting, jacking cars, and shooting people down. However, this is the first Grand Theft Auto game to have the character swim underwater, even though the swimming mechanics are iffy at best. Because of the game's huge open world environment, the player now has the choice to play the game however he or she wants to. Completing missions to advance through the game is still mandatory, but players can also have the choice to eat at restaurants to increase health, go to the barber shop to get a new stylish haircut, go to the local gym to get some exercise, and even go to the clothes shop to customise Carl with all kinds of clothes. The game also has much more variety of weapons and vehicles than more than any other GTA game. Other new additions added to the table are being able to interact with other gangs. With the Grove Street families, you can recruit up to three gangsters to help you in the gameplay. As you progress through the storyline in Los Santos, you can also go to enemy gang territories and take over their gang by killing a number of enemies. Once the land is taken over however, other g enemy gangs will launch an attack and you'll have to save it again. Other additions include burglary missions, where you can take a black van and invade other people's homes at night to steal stuff, mini games, where the player can play games like basketball, pool, and even arcade machines. The game also lets you visit betting shops and casinos in Las Venturas, where you can do some gambling and test your luck to earn more money. In terms of character development, the game also borrows elements from an RPG, like what I said earlier, being able to customise clothes and exercise, and even learn some hand-to-hand -hand combat like boxing and kung fu. This is also the first Grand Theft Auto game to have dating involved, where you can take a girl out on a date to eat at a restaurant, and then... yeah, I think you get the picture. As the story progresses, you are also given the chance to learn how to fly, which completing these lessons will give you your own pilot license. With that, you can enter an airport and fly to another city the quicker way. Oh, and did I forget to mention you can fly a jetpack in this game? Pretty fucking cool, huh? Guys, I could just go on and on and on and on about the other features that this game brought, but since this is a retrospective and not a full review on the game, so I'm kinda pressed for time. On its release on October 26, 2004, HOLY SHIT! Where do I begin? Well, let's start out with the reviews. Whilst a few critics gave the game minor criticisms like the character models, the low textures, and some control issues, every critic and gamer on the planet praised the game like a god for its new gameplay features, the story, and the expanded open world environment of San Andreas. <sighs> However, just like the other two games, the game received more controversy. This time, many people accused the game's storyline of racial stereotyping and the gangster-like talk being used in the game. However, the most critical of all was the hot coffee mod. What is the hot coffee mod, you ask? Well, it's a small minigame added to the game, where the player can, can see Carl having a sexual intercourse with his in-game girlfriend. Yeah, because of this fair feature, many people were going nuts about this and started some lawsuits. But enough about that. If the overwhelming praise wasn't enough, WAIT TILL YOU SEE THE SALES! On its original release, the game sold over 12 million copies on the PS2 alone, and then in March 2008, it sold more than 17.3 million copies, and combining with the sales of the other ports of the game, it has sold over 21.5 million copies, making it not only the best selling game on the PS2, but also the third best selling game of all time. The game was also later ported to the original Xbox and PC. The PC version also contains an online multiplayer, simply named San Andreas Multiplayer, which even, even as of today, people still go on to. Because of all this, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas has been considered one of the greatest video games of all time. So after the massive hit from San Andreas, things were getting a little sketchy. During the release of San Andreas, another company called Digital Eclipse, which as of now is called Backbone Entertainment, made a deal with Rockstar and developed a GTA game for the Game Boy Advance called... 
well, Grand Theft Auto Advance, which is basically Grand Theft Auto on the Game Boy Advance. When the game released, it didn't really live up to the success of the previous titles did, as it got really mixed reviews from critics and gamers. Then, when the PlayStation Portable was hitting the market, Rockstar decided that a spin-off for the GTA series was more suitable for that console. So, another Rockstar company in Britain, Rockstar Leeds, formerly known as Mobius Entertainment, built a new game engine for the game, and Rockstar North decided that the game would take gamers back to the environment of Liberty City that was presented in Grand Theft Auto 3. What came out of it was Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. It takes place in 1998 and it's the story of Tony Cipriani, the guy from Grand Theft Auto 3, is coming home from a long vacation to work for his boss Salvatore Leone again, who is also from Grand Theft Auto 3, so he can help win the war between the Leone family, the Sindaco family and the Forelli family, whilst Tony tries to rise up as a high ranking mobster. Tony would also have to deal with issues about his mother, who thinks he's not man enough. So the game setting is the exact same Liberty City setting as Grand Theft Auto 3, but has more of a higher resolution, and it takes place before GTA 3. There also isn't much to the gameplay, as you still have the same storyline and side missions to do that helps you advance through the game, and you still have the ability to save your game at safe houses and change your clothes. Because that this game was released after San Andreas, two innovations that San Andreas offered that are stripped in this game are the ability to swim and climb, new vehicle weapon and variety, customizations, and a more expanded open world environment. However, I think it's understandable since this was ported to the PSP, and the PSP would probably not have the capability or limit to put all of these features into this game. On a brighter side, it still has many gangs hanging around certain parts of the area, the weapon variety is still as a, as a good balance, the missions themselves are still as enjoyable, and it does have a small multiplayer feature. One new addition that they added is that whenever you die during a mission, a taxi will appear at the hospital to take you back to where you started the mission. Also, they added motorcycles in the installment, since GTA 3 was also set in Liberty City, but didn't have any motorcycles. Although airplanes and helicopters are present in this game, none of them are usable and only exist as the background. Although there are a few ways here and there that can get you flying in a helicopter. I'm not going to tell you how, just look it up on YouTube. Anyway, when the game was released on October 24th, 2005, it did fairly well. The critics gave it positive reviews, and it sold over 8 million copies worldwide. The following year after the success of Liberty City Stories came Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. Just like Liberty City, this takes place before the events of Vice City in 1984. The story is about a guy named Victor Vance who becomes a soldier for the US Army. However, his corrupt officer Jerry Martinez, who in reality is a drug smuggler, gets him kicked out after he brings drugs and whores into the base. Vic would later meet up with Phil Cassidy, an ex-officer and gun rage owner, Louise Cassidy, Vic's love interest in the game, and his brother Lance Vance, who we all remember from Vice City. Vic would later go into other kinds of situations like drug deals and in leagues with some mafia families like the Mendez brothers. The gameplay for Vice City Stories is exactly like Liberty City Stories, and the setting is exactly like Vice City, but with a few additions added. One thing is that, just like in San Andreas, you can swim in the water, however, unlike in San Andreas, swimming in this game is limited. The game also has much more variety of vehicles and weapons this time than Liberty City Stories. The hand-to-hand -hand combat system has now been given more depth in the game this time. The biggest changes to the system is that the players can now perform grappling moves, throws, standing on top of enemies to punch them down, and other kinds of wrestling moves. The graphics for this game on the PSP have also made an improvement from Liberty City Stories, as we can see some more special effects like the fire coming out of the guns when shooting, faster loading times, new animations, the density of vehicles and objects, etc. One of the new key elements that this game offers is the Empire Buildings. This feature borrows elements from the properties of Vice City and the gang wars of San Andreas. To make some money, players must open and operate many of the businesses around the city after taking it over from the enemy gangs, and the type and scale of the business is all in the player's decision. More depth has been added to the storyline missions of this, of this game more than Liberty City stories that can range from getting from checkpoint to checkpoint, collecting a number of items, and taking a helicopter to the skies. On its release on October 31st, 2006, it did pretty much just like Liberty City Stories. The critics really enjoyed it, 
It won a Golden Joystick Award for Best Handheld Game, and it sold over 4.5 million copies worldwide. Sadly, however, this would be the last GTA game on the PS2, and the last GTA game of the third Grand Theft Auto era. Now, you might be thinking, if there was a Liberty City Stories and a Vice City Stories, what happened to a San Andreas Stories? Well, considering that San Andreas was without a doubt the biggest GTA game out there, it wouldn't be up to limit with the PSP. So it was the time that the PlayStation 2 was closing down to make way for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Like how Grand Theft Auto 3 turned out, Rockstar were going to make the next GTA game for the next gen consoles just as groundbreaking, and this anticipated many gamers across the globe. The result? Grand Theft Auto 4. It's the story of a guy named Nico Bellic, who travels from Eastern Europe to visit his cousin Roman in Liberty City in hopes for a better life, and for the wedding of Roman and his girlfriend Mallory. However, his new life isn't all it's cracked up to be, as he gets involved with many gangsters and criminal organisations, like a lone shark named Vlad, a drug smuggler named Mikhail Faustin, and, and a Russian criminal named Dimitri. Nico and Roman's lives will then get more and more downhill, which then leads to a lot of dramatic scenes. Much like San Andreas, the story deals with a lot more darker and serious tones than the other installments of the series. Even though this game is the beginning of a new era for the Grand Theft Auto series, the core gameplay of the franchise is still mandatory in this game. You can still do storyline and side missions, have a variety of weapons and vehicles, and have the choice to do whatever you wish in an open world environment. So what exactly is new in this game? Well, the atmosphere. Remember the old Liberty City, which just seemed like a typical criminal environment? Well in this game, Liberty City is more heavily based on New York City this time, like the buildings and some of the landmarks, like the Statue of Happiness, which is basically the Statue of Liberty but with a happy face. Some of the features that were used in San Andreas have been brought back in this game, like the ability to customise your clothes, swimming in the water, and taking girlfriends out on dates. But this time you then take them to bowling, drinking, and yeah. You can still save your game by going to your safe house and sleeping there, but the game this time also has an auto save feature after you complete a mission. Also, in the safe house you can also watch TV, which has nothing interesting on TV anyway, so why bother? When you get a wanted level in the game, a search area will appear on the map and if you are able to stay off the area for a while, the cops will lose sight and your wanted level will go. The game this time has more of an emphasis on realism than the previous games. For one, a GPS has been added to the map whenever you are driving to help get to your destination. You can use taxis to get to another destination, using your mobile phones to call friends and ask them to hang out, and controlling the vehicles in the game control more realistically than before. You can also visit an internet cafe and go onto the internet. Well, okay, not onto websites like YouTube or Facebook, but to check emails from the other characters and find some dates on the internet. The combat system to this game has also been upgraded with a, f with a free and auto-aim feature, and being able to take cover from incoming enemy attacks. The game also includes morality, where after completing a mission will give you a choice to kill one of the two characters, which will then affect the game's storyline. Also, just like in San Andreas, the game has an online multiplayer, with more multi multiplayer games like Deathmatch, Racing, Cops and Robbers, Team Deathmatch and Free Mode. So when the game was released on April 29th, 2008, it was a historical success! I mean, look at this! LOOK AT THIS! Much like San Andreas, the game was praised by every critic and gamer like a god for its story, upgraded realism, and some new features. It also won a buttload of awards from Spike TV, Giant Bomb, Kotaku, and Game Trailers. And as for the sales, it sold more than 6 million copies on its first week. And as I'm recording now, the game has sold over 21 million copies worldwide. But of course, that didn't stop the controversy coming to the game. Many people were still bitching about the game's violent and sexual content, and the game's involvement of drinking alcohol and drink driving which yet again led to a lot of lawsuits. But even with the controversy, Grand Theft Auto 4 was still a smash massive hit, even earning a spot in the book 1000 video 1001 video games you must play before you die. So because of the huge critical acclaim of Grand Theft Auto 4, Rockstar North then decided to release two expansion pack games for the game, like what they did with the original GTA game. These games were Grand Theft Auto Lost and Dan, and Grand Theft Auto The Ballad of Gay Tony. 
They pretty much share the exact same gameplay and setting of Liberty City as Grand Theft Auto 4 does, but only with different stories. Lost in Dam's story involves a biker named Johnny Clibbets, whose biker gang called The Lost is suffering under financial problems in which he has to sort out as the story progresses, whereas Ballad of Gay's Tony involves Luis Fernando Lopez, a personal bodyguard of Anthony Gay Tony Prince, who owns two of the largest nightclubs in Liberty City, starts to suffer from problems as well and eventually goes from up to down. Now there are some new features added to these new these games. For Lost and Dam's features, there are gang wars previously used in San Andreas and the customization for motorcycles. Ballad of Gay's Tony's new features are dancing minigames and underground fight tournaments that can be entered all based on the player's decision. And of course, when these games were released, they didn't get the critical acclaim of GTA 4, but they still got positive reviews. And later, Rockstar North combined these games with GTA 4 into a compilation game called Grand Theft Auto Episodes from Liberty City. Later in 2009, Rockstar released the next GTA game for the handheld consoles, the PSP and Nintendo DS, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. It's about a spoiled son of a triad boss named Huang Li, who travels to Liberty City to deliver a sword called Yu Jian from his tribe family to his uncle Kenny after the death of his father. However, at his arrival at Liberty City, he is ambushed by assassins and they take his sword. Now Huan Ling has to do whatever it takes to get his sword back for his Uncle Kenny. Now the gameplay for this installment actually pays more homage to the first two GTA games on the PS1 more than the other installments, like having an overhead view of the city and similar type of gameplay. The Liberty City setting for this game is the same one as GTA 4 and not the one from GTA 3. Now just like the every other installment in the series, we still have the same abilities, shooting down people, do storyline and side missions, blah 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 blah. However, one thing that has changed is the ability to lose your wanted level. Instead of leaving a search area to lose track of the cops like in GTA 4, you have to take out as many cops as you can and disable all of their police cars. Speaking of which, this game allows you to destroy inside of cars or disabling their car alarms in order to jack them if nobody's in them. To make some more money in the game, you can also do a little subplot that involves peddling drugs around the city, setting up some organisations and destroying CCTV cameras all over the city, which is just like collecting hidden packages from the other GTA games. Also, this is perhaps the first GTA game to be ported over to a Nintendo console. So when the game was released on March 17, 2009, it got critical acclaim with no problem. Critics gave it about an 8.5 or 9 out of 10. However, I can't say the same for the sales. From what I've gathered, the game only sold 98,000 copies, making it one of the lowest selling games in the franchise. On the bright side, however, it earned two awards from Spike TV and GameSpot for Best Handheld Game and Best Nintendo DS Game. In conclusion, the Grand Theft Auto franchise is not only one of the most inspirational video game franchises, but it also is one of the most important. Whether you love, hate, or not even interested in the series, you can't deny that it has been responsible for revolutionising gaming since the early days of the PS2. It has made three games widely praised by nearly every gamer under the sun. One that had revolutionised sandbox and storytelling of games, and two that have been considered by a lot of gamers as two of the greatest video games of all time. So what will GTA 5 have to offer? Well, again, only time will tell. And so, to conclude this retrospective, I'll give you my personal top 10 favourite Grand Theft Auto games of all time. Here we go, number 10, Grand Theft Auto Ballad of Gay Tony. Same game, different story. Number 9, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Nothing special other than paying homage to the first two GTA games. Number 8, Grand Theft Auto 4. Decent but overrated in my opinion. Number 7, Grand Theft Auto. For the first game in the series, it has aged okay. Number 6, Grand Theft Auto 2. Better than the first GTA in every way. Number 5, Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. Despite some flaws, it was a fine conclusion to the GTA 3 era. Number 4, Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. A straightforward but enjoyable GTA game for the PSP. Number 3, Grand Theft Auto 3. Its groundbreaking history has aged greatly. Number 2, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Pretty much the video game version of Scarface. And number 1, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. One of my favourite video games of all time, mainly because of its engaging story, open world environment and addicting gameplay features. Well, that's all there is to talk about on the Grand Theft Auto franchise. This is Zookstar1000 aka Mark, and I'll see you all in the next video.